In this video, we are going to see how we can set up initiate checkout event for Facebook Pixel or your Shopify store using Google Tag Manager web containers. This video has been divided into five different sections. In the first section, we are going to set up Google Tag Manager container on your Shopify store so you can track all the events that we will configure in the web container. In the second section, we will configure the page view event for Facebook Pixel. This is a base configuration tag that has to have on all pages of the Shopify store. In the third section of the video, we will We'll set up the initial checkout script in the Shopify store and in the fourth section we will finalize the tags, triggers, variables and all the templates that we need to capture that data red event from the Shopify store. And in the final section of the video we will just do some testing and make sure the store is live and public so we can track all the events. Let's get to my laptop so we can configure Google Tag Manager container on the Shopify store. If you are on the home page you will see this container ID on the top right corner. Once you click on the container ID it will give you two tracking snippets one is for the head code and one is for the body let's install the head container code first and then we will install the body container code copy the head code and go back to your website click on the online store this is where all of your theme files are under the theme section once you click on edit code button under the three dots it is always advisable to duplicate your file before making any changes so in case you mess something up you can always go back to the previous version but since this is a demo store we are not going to do that let's click on edit code so we can go into the editing section of the code the head code is supposed to be pasted right underneath the head section of theme.liquid file and now we need to copy the body code so we can paste the body code uh, under the body section on this page let's just hit ctrl f and search for body instead of just scrolling down to find it uh, for me, the body code is on line 253, so right underneath that I'm going to create some space and paste the body code. Let's format the code and hit save. Perfect. Now let's just verify quickly if our container code is live on the website or not. Once you hit preview button on your Google Tag Manager web container, what it is going to do is open a debug window. And this debug window can be used to link with your website so that we can check if all the events are working fine in this container or not. If you have installed the Google Legacy Assistant Chrome extension, the link can be found in the description. You can see that one Google Tag Manager container is firing on your store. Now, in the second section of this video, we are going to configure the Facebook configuration tag on our Google Tag Manager web container so we can track the page view event from Facebook Pixel. So let's head back to the Facebook Event Manager. It does not matter on which page you are of your business.facebook.com. You can find this option for all tools on any pages and just click on Event Manager. This will redirect you back to the event manager page on the event manager you will find all the pixels that you have for your store on the left side you will see an option for data sources this is where all the facebook pixels are located uh, facebook has recently renamed everything from meta pixels to database so now they are called database uh, the only thing we need here is the database id if you have already created a pixel just click copy the id otherwise just create a pixel by clicking on the create new facebook pixel Let's head back to the Google Tag Manager container to create a new Facebook Pixel configuration tag. In this video, we are not going to use the custom HTML tags because they are a little daunting to work with the coding section. So we are going to use a custom template tag that has been built by Facebook Archive team for Google Tag Manager. To install this tag, let's head to the template section of the Google Tag Manager web container. And under the tag templates, let's hit search gallery. When you hit search gallery, you will see all the options of the available tags that has been created by the awesome community that we have on Google Tag Manager. Let's just search for Facebook Pixel and you will see a tag created by Facebook Archive team. Let's add this to the workspace so we can use this tag as our general tag that we can use. Perfect. Now let's go to the tag section and this tag is available for us to use. Let's hit new. Since we want this tag to fire on all pages of the website, so the, for the trigger we are going to go for all pages. And for the pixel we are going to select the Facebook Pixel ID. We can directly paste the Facebook Pixel ID here. However, since we have to use this Pixel ID for initial checkout event, it is really necessary that we can create a constant variable for this one. So in future, if we change the Facebook Pixel ID or if we want to make any changes to the Pixel ID, we don't have to do it across 10 different tags. We can just do it in this inside this constant variable. Let's rename it to Facebook Pixel ID. Uh, your spelling does not have to be as bad as mine. You can do proper spelling so let's hit save and let's rename this tag to facebook configuration tag again your spelling does not have to be as bad as mine but this is just an option if you want to do that you can do it uh, perfect let's just hit preview to see if the facebook pixel tag is firing on the page or not 
let's go back to the store and let's click on this pixel helper extension if you don't have any kind of ad blockers on your website then this pixel helper extension will work fine and you can see that a page view request has been fired on the page this is awesome so now let's get to the third section of the video which is configuring initiate checkout script on our shopify store so we can configure google tag manager for initiate checkout event in the fourth section if you really head down to the description section of this video you will find a link where you can copy and paste the scripts that you need for this video we are going to create some snippets so let's just first get into the snippet section and the first snippet that we need to create is for head data layer so let's create one snippet for head data layer and then we need one more snippet for checkout data layer so let's create that one too so this one is going to be checkout data layer awesome now we are going to copy and paste the code that we have from the link perfect now we are going to paste the code for the head section and now we are going to paste the code for the checkout data layer section you can find this code in the description of the video let's just hit save awesome now right below the body container where we added the custom html code for the no script section let's just search for body and right below this google tag manager container we are going to import this head snippet to import the head snippet you can use the sign for include and let's include head data layer file here let's hit format code and hit save what this code is basically doing is that importing the head data layer file and head data layer is loading this cart data layer page which will trigger two events one is for view cart and then the other one is for begin checkout we are working with this begin checkout event let's just go to the demo pages and see if this cart event is working fine let's go to any of the product pages add an item to the cart go to the cart page to see if this event is working let's just hit on initiate checkout button and go to our data layer view we can see that a custom begin checkout event has fired and it has all the details such as currency, value, items and all the things that we need for e-commerce events. Perfect. Now since this is working fine, we can head over to the section number 4 of this video where we will create a Google Tag Manager event for Facebook Pixel which will trigger this begin checkout event. So let's go back to the Google Tag Manager container. However, before creating this event, we need a few things. We need to set up a trigger and some variables first. So for the trigger, we are going to create a custom event, which will match the same event name as this one. So let's just copy this event's name so we don't make any spelling mistakes. Let's paste it and let's rename it to custom event, custom begin checkout. Perfect. Now we have created the trigger that will fire this event. The third thing we need to do is create the variables that will create, contain the values for content IDs, contents name, value, currency and all these other details so they can be populated dynamically. We can see that we have all of this information inside this data layer object so let's just create some data layer variable that can read the values of e-commerce items, e-commerce.value and e-commerce.currency. In the Google Tag Manager container we are going to click new to create a data layer variable and the first one we can create for e-commerce.items let's rename this variable to dlv e-commerce.items now we need to create two more variable for the e-commerce event parameters the first one is going to be e-commerce.value so let's do value amazing and the last one we need is for currency parameter so let's create another data layer variable and let's name it currency by TLD currency. Perfect. However, to create event parameters for content ID, content name, num items, etc., we need to use a different user defined variable that we can download from the template window again. So let's go back to the templates. And for this one, we are going to map the GA for event items array into the event parameters for Facebook Pixel. We can use the step.io's new event parameter generator variable. Let's search for Facebook parameter generator and add it to the workspace. So we can use it as a variable in our day-to-day -day life in Google Tag Manager web container. So let's go to the variable and now this imported new variable is available for us to use. This should be on the top of the page if you don't have any other ones. This requires only one input field that is the array of objects and since the array of object is being saved inside e-commerce.items, this is the array of objects we are referring to. We are just going to refer this back to this one. The IDs of uh, the items array are inside item underscore ID. So let's just paste it here. Uh, item underscore names are under names. So let's get this one. Uh, the price of the items is inside the price variable so let's get the price variable and the quantity is under quantity variable so let's just get this one we are just referring to the item parameter inside the item array so let's just rename this one to facebook parameter generators e-commerce items and contents let's hit save so we have created the first variable for contents we need to do the same thing for content ids contents names and all the other ones 
Let's just copy and paste this existing one instead of writing everything from new. And let's rename this one to content IDs. Perfect. Now we need to do this two more times. One for num items array. And then the last one we need to do is contents name. Content underscore name. That will tell the Facebook pixel that what was the name of the item that were inside the cart for the begin checkout event. So let's hit save. Let's go to the tax and we can finally create the tax because we have all the variables that are required. Since we want this tag to only fire on the custom begin checkout event, so we will select that trigger. And for the tag, we're going to use the Facebook pixel tag. We already have created a constant variable for pixel ID, so let's select that. The event we want to fire is called initiate checkout, so let's select initiate checkout. And for the object properties, we are going to create six different properties. We are going to send content underscore type. Content underscore type basically tells Facebook Pixel that what is your store, whether it is an e-commerce store or a hotel or something like that. Since it's an e-commerce store, we are going to select con product. For content IDs, we can refer to the same variable that we created for content IDs. For content underscore name, we can select the content underscore name variable so that it will dynamically pull the values. Then we need contents. Contents is similar to the items array. The only difference is that in items array, the price is under price variable, whereas in the content contents, it's under item underscore price. Then we need value and currency parameter. Let's select value. We have value under e-commerce dot value and the currency is under currency parameter. So let's select currency. We can also import the last one, which is num underscore items to tell Facebook pixel how many items were purchased to select num underscore item and this looks perfect let's facebook pixel initiate checkout again your spelling does not has to be as bad as mine so let's hit save since we have done all the thing we can move to the final step of the video where we are going to test if everything is working all right let's hit preview on our google tag manager web container so the website will connect our store with the debug view great in the meantime on the facebook pixel we are also going to open the test event section so we can see what kind of events we are doing on the page let's go to a catalog page select one of the products add it to the card view the card and then we will initiate the checkout event we can see that the page view events are coming in so let's just click on the begin checkout so we can see if the checkout event is working fine perfect the begin checkout event has fired the event and if we go back to the pixel the initial checkout event has already triggered and we can see that it has sent event parameters such as value currency item ids content type product titles and content this was the difference that we were talking about in items array for content since everything is working fine we can go ahead and publish this google tag manager web container so the changes that we have made they do not stay in the debug view initiate checkout again your spelling does not has to be really bad as mine and let's hit publish doing so we have successfully configured initial checkout event on the shopify store you can refer to the link in the description for any kind of details